So I put this bed on a different truck, another Ford one ton, 13 years ago. A friend of mine, George Smith, and I built it. George probably did 70%. He had a lot of the great design ideas, and he was almost single-handedly responsible for the crane. But I knew pretty much what I wanted as a contractor on a flatbed. We modified uh, the existing sort of husk of a bed into something that was exactly what I wanted. Let me show you how this thing works for me. This is a 12-foot bed, 6 foot 8 wide. That leaves about three inches of the dual projecting outside of the footprint of the trailer. But it kind of holds things in kind of tidy so I don't feel like I'm hanging out over width just with the truck. <coughs> and it gives me a clear field of view down the side of the truck to the front of the trailers that I'm so often pulling. So these boxes were designed primarily to be strong and secure. I didn't worry about what they weighed. The metal pieces were cut out and then formed. The edges were rolled, and on a big press break, these ridges were broken into the door from corner to corner. That provides some rigidity in that diaphragm, as if 3 16 needed it. But it just makes a nice looking and nice strong door. This is a giant piano hinge. They can be bought that way in six foot segments, cut to length, welded on. Let me point out this little eyebrow. We extended the roof, turned the edge down. It keeps, keeps rainwater from working back inside the door and running down on the inside. Good. It's just a real tough door. I like it. I get a lot of stuff in here. It concerns me that this compressor fits so well because when it dies, I'm going to have a hard time duplicating that fit. Got room for a couple of pin guns, staplers. Got the laser. Got the gate mouth bag with all the little hand tools, miscellaneous stuff, drill bits. Four foot level fits in there pretty nice. It's perfect for what I do. So this lower box, you can see that's 34 inches long. This is where I carry my fasteners. Miscellaneous fasteners and hardware. Nail gun nails, screws, all kinds of screws and bolts and staples. I've got one of almost anything that I need in there. It's easy for it to get out of control, but you know, it works pretty good. These things are put on there so if they jar open, they can't come all the way open. And I'm not gonna leave a trail of stuff down the road if I have a little bad luck. So I've got two of these boxes. I've had them for probably 30 years. I bought them in Las Vegas. They're NAC. You've seen NAC boxes. They're the characteristic khaki brown color. They're very secure, very weatherproof. Great boxes. On this side, I carry my go-to tools, the stuff that I'm going to roll out on 90% of the jobs that I show up at. Scale saw, bags, a couple nail guns, the things that come out more often than not. There are items down in the bottom that are more occasional, but this, this box is opened every time I stop the truck. So the first truck that I had this bed on was a two-wheel drive. It was about four inches lower, and I didn't need any help getting up into the box. When I put it on the four-wheel drive, which, by the way, you've got to have, all right? You've just got to have it. When I put that on, I realized I'm too short. So I put these steps on. They work great. I put this on when I built the truck because I load cords up here in this basket on the top. It occurred to me that there's quite a bit of space wasted up there in the rack, but that I could put a basket up here that would hang down below the level of the bearing surface on the rack. Nice spot for cords. But don't put air hoses up here, and air hose will blow out. So these lower boxes, they're not as secure as the top boxes, and so I don't really keep things of real value in them. This box I use for miscellaneous. I keep my wire reels in here, keep masking tape and, and uh, construction tape. I keep wire tying equipment and pliers, have an assortment of hole saws, masking supplies, keep a couple bundles of shims. Always carry a bottle jack. You never know when you might have to lift a garage header. Welding rods. This is just kind of a rough work, rough work thing. This is a control to my crane. We'll set that up in a minute. These are the tools that I may need or I may not need. Um, I got 
drill bits and miscellaneous power tools primarily in here. Nice and dry, nice and secure. Nobody's going to bother them with this thing's locked up. I keep wrenches in here. Keep a little snatch block for getting a double purchase on my crane. You're, you're aware of mechanical advantage, but sometimes it's really nice to be able to get a reduction in the lift on that crane, as much to slow the lift as to increase the lift. Pretty handy. By the way, that's the same reason I like four-wheel drive. I don't usually go mud running, but when you're backing a trailer up a long driveway, put it in four-wheel low, you can creep. It just really makes maneuvering a trailer a lot easier. Yep. So this is a couple of things. This is where I carry my stakes, concrete stakes, three-footers, 30-inchers. And this is where the, the uh, crane mechanism is located. There's a battery in here, there's the pump, there's the hookup for the crane control. I'm going to demonstrate that in just a second. Let me just say this about the crane. Before I got the first crane put on this truck, which was smaller and lighter, my back trouble made it such that probably six times a year my wife would have to help me put my socks on and help me lace my boots. Since I put a crane on my work truck, she hasn't had to pull those socks on even once. A crane on your work truck is the best chiropractor on the planet. So this is one of George Smith's really wonderful inventions. George another wizard. Uh, let me say that again. George is another wizard. He's a heavy diesel mechanic. He's just, if he would have had the advantage of a college education, he would have spent his career working for NASA. Okay? He can figure anything out. If you've got something that's broken and you need it to be running, give it to George Smith and in 20 minutes it's going to be running. I don't care what it is. But anyway, look at this. A lot of adjustable hitches are vertical, which means that they're always wiggling back and forth. By putting this angle in here, the weight of the tongue puts it in a bind that takes all the wiggle right out of it. Okay, it's just, it's just pretty brilliant. I had to reinforce it a little bit here. I kind of tweaked it a couple of times. I welded on this step so I can use it to get in and out. But that, that hitch is just, just a home run. So these, these racks are a little unhandy um, to take in and out. But that kind of works for me too. I mean, people don't mess with it. I just take a stake and I put it in there. And all four sides will come off like that. It gives me six feet of flat bed in the back. Let me show you these D-ring. I knew I'd be tying down loads occasionally. Welded in those hold downs so I can tie something down inside the footprint of the bed. No rattle, no shake. Okay. So here's how this crane works. That's the control. That's just an LB, a three quarter inch electrical uh, aluminum LB with the controls in it. Drilled the cover, forged the hook. You'll see how that works in a minute. This is just a trailer light hookup. Got a little maintenance issue right there. But I just reach inside here, I've got the matching female side trailer hookup. Crane goes up. The boom is electric over hydraulic. We've got a pump, a hydraulic pump. The crane, the, the winch is an ATV winch, 4,500 pound capacity. I never use anywhere near that. But you can see the timing is good. I can line down and boom up and hold the load. Look at that. I can boom down and line up. Works pretty good. In fact, it works very good. The swing is mechanical. I have to, I mean manual. The swing I have to take care of myself. I think I'm gonna put a brake on that one of these days so it won't swivel on a side hill like this. But I just can't emphasize enough what a boost this thing is. I used to do a lot more concrete work. This makes a good place to put handle tools and my eight foot level will go in here. I don't have anything in there right now. It's a little hard on things. They bounce around, it wears the paint off. But it's very secure. Set the crane down on there. Nobody's getting into it. If I have something heavy and I don't want to just put a really unreasonable load on the back corner of my truck. 
Thanks, now the truck's supported. I can pick up, oh, I don't know, up close to the truck, I can pick up probably 12 or 1500 pounds and not, not worry too much. That welder, I'll show you in a minute, it weighs 750 pounds. I can pick it up with the boom nearly all the way extended. It doesn't seem to mind. It's, uh, it's just a great rig. So you can see this is a manual transmission. Coupling a manual transmission with a four-wheel drive truck makes a very controllable power source. So this is not a fancy truck. 1998, it's an old truck. It's only got 160,000 miles on it, so it's got lots of life left. But the thing that really sets this truck apart is that it's a 7.3 liter power stroke. Diesel truck appreciators will tell you that is as good as you're going to do. 7.3 liter power stroke Ford engines and powertrains are bulletproof. They have so many characteristics that sort of set them apart that they're just they're just they're just dynamite. Now, my personal experience agrees with that completely. I've put 100,000 miles on this. I put one starter in it. That's it. The glow plug relays are a little unreliable. I've replaced one or two of those. But man, it starts good, it runs good, it pulls hard, the fuel economy's good. I highly recommend the 7.3 liter power stroke. I'm gonna run this, I think, till I die or it dies, whichever happens first. It's just an excellent tool tank, which is what I use it for. So one of the things that I didn't anticipate when I was designing and helping George build this was how satisfying it is to get in a truck and start it every morning that, that's got my fingerprints all over it, that I know intimately and that's perfectly suited for what I do. So think outside of the box a little bit. You don't have to just drive a half ton with a crossbed toolbox and a skill saw and a set of tool bags. Don't be afraid to tackle work that requires a little more infrastructure. Don't be afraid to modify or design or build something that not only is something for a client, but is for something that'll contribute to your work process. I love this truck. I love building it. I love owning it. I love driving it. I love working off of it. I'm thankful to have it. And thank you for your interest in this thing. Uh, we never thought that a tool truck tour would be interesting to you guys. But maybe it is. Thanks for watching.